have changed between us, haven't they? Yes. I'm Lenny, by the way. Oh, I like your eyes. Thanks. They're new. This one. He put these images in my head. Why? He has a plan. Are you a good person? It's been years since I've let loose. So, strap in. Legion, all new next Tuesday at 10 on FX and FX Now. All right, guys, so this week's review of Legion is not going to be as long as the usual because this week's Legion episode was pretty much complimentary to last week's episode. As a matter of fact, the events of this week's episode kind of span between the events of the premiere of the season and the events of last week's episode. You can see that clearly when it comes to Melanie. I mean, we see that conversation that Melanie and Sid had early on this season. That's pretty much a flashback. We're seeing the changes that occurred to Melanie from the moment they actually happened, and they started happening early on this season. But as per the usual, and in the spirit of not wasting any more time, welcome back guys, and let's go. So number one, we've got the entire situation with Melanie, all the way up until she attacks Clark at the end of episode 8. So we start off with seeing Melanie in flashbacks, that conversation with Sid, I think that was the very same conversation from the premiere, so yeah, that's pretty much a flashback. The second scene though, in this flashback sequence, where Oliver is pretty much sitting at the edge of her bed, having this conversation with her, I believe that was around the time that Lenny and Oliver made it into Division 3 in their attempt to find the monk. Now back then we only saw him at the entrance to her room and we thought that she pretty much woke up as a result of kind of feeling his presence. But the truth is there was an entire conversation that they've had with her at that point and they have had her under their control in a manner of speaking like they were prepping her in order to go under their control, that being Oliver and the Shadow King. Now before I move on and to give credit where credit is due, the information on this video is a collaborative effort between between me and Hillbilly Author over Discord, we do have these conversations after each episode airs over Discord, so pretty much some of the points over here are actually all his, and some of them are basically a product of our discussions, while some are pretty much mine. So moving on to number two, Hillbilly Author believes that Melanie Bird is a stand-in for Dr. Moira McTaggart. Now given the points that he raised over there, I do believe that he is actually onto something, that Melanie Bird is actually an easter egg for Dr. Moira McTaggart from the comics. So let's see, one, both are doctors, two, both have tried to help David, three, both have had husbands that fell under some sort of mind control and unwillingly worked with the villains, four, in New Exiles, it was unclear if Moira had any powers and it is unclear if Melanie does have any powers, and finally, five, both happen to be locked up under some kind of quarantine at some point. Now one more reason this might make a lot of sense is the fact that we've got a Moira McTaggart within the X-Men movie universe. Universe. And if this is connected to the X-Men movie universe, and it is probably connected by the way to the X-Men movie universe, they want to shuffle things up a little bit. For one thing, the storylines might actually not add up, and for another thing, they might not be able to bring in the different actresses that portrayed the role within the X-Men movie universe, and that might cause a little bit of a problem, confusion to say the least. But number three, we had none of those subliminal messages by John Hamm, but it is worth noting that there are new suggestions as to who John Hamm might be. Just in case, he's not just the narrator of the season and he's a little bit more than that. He might be actually a protagonist or an antagonist on the season. Now if that were to be the case, he's possibly going to be stepping out of the shadows by the end of the season. Now if he is any of those villains we've been suggesting he is since the beginning of the season, a lot of fans that is have been suggesting he is since the very beginning of the season, I don't think he's going to be defeated at the very end. I would think that all he would do over here is show his face, but we would never get to see him being defeated by Legion or anyone else for that matter before season 3 airs. But however, to speak of the two new suggestions that we've got over here as to who John Hamm's character might be, we've got Delusionaut and we've got Professor Y. Now both of them could either be portrayed as the protagonist helpful personalities of Legion that we do see in the comics or they could be portrayed as villains, a variation from what they are in the comics. So number 4, how does Professor Y fit with these subliminal messages from John Hamm? Now we do know that in the comics, the emergence of the personality of Professor Y or Fiend was a product of the death of Professor X, the shock that David had to deal with 
due to the death of Professor X. One distinct story that comes to mind over here is when Blindfold entered David's mind and what he did over here was pretty much restrain every single personality of David's except for one that was unaffected, that being Fiend. Now that completely fits what John Hamm's talk in lectures about delusions, control, being able to see things for what they are rather than for what you want to believe they are. Number 5, Delusionaut is the master of illusions personality of David's. His ability to create delusions was very powerful to the extent that some of the strongest telepaths could not realize that it was a delusion or a deception. So once again, think about all that John Hamm has been saying, all the talk about delusions, you know, how delusions are created, all of that good stuff. This person could be someone who's so talented at creating delusions, a legion personality who could pretty much do that. Now if that were to be Delusionaut and we're gonna see him sometime this season, it means one of two things. One, we are gonna either see John Hamm split from David and do his thing as a separate personality, a runaway personality. Or two, we're gonna see the personality of Delusionaut take over David and that means we're never gonna see John Hamm in action, we're just gonna hear his voice, the voice of the Delusionaut until that moment that he takes control of David. Whether he's gonna be the good personality that we know from the comics or he's gonna be kind of changed for the series, that's a totally different story and we've got no idea as of yet. Number 6, when you walk with the Lord, he walks with you. Now the statement made by Lenny during this episode to none other than Amy might be actually an easter egg or a hint towards Lord Trauma. Now I did talk about Lord Trauma last week, I did talk about how David might end up becoming Lord Trauma or how that personality might actually take over and I did state that this might be the villain of the season, how David ends up being the cause of that plague in the future. You could imagine why this might cross someone's mind because the death of Amy was one of the most traumatic events to happen to David and as I just stated, this was part of a conversation that went down between Lenny on one hand and Amy on the other hand. But as I did state early on, this episode was pretty good yet very minimal, we're getting more information, we're getting more explanations, but we're not really getting additional events beyond the point that we stopped at on last week's episode. We do know that Clark is temporarily incapacitated because of what Melanie did to him at the very end of last week's episode, which we also got to see once more on this week's episode. We know that Lenny, even though deviated from plan for a moment there, is doing everything according to plan at this very moment. However though, that momentary deviation from the original plan kind of puts you under the impression that she might be under the control of the Shadow King. But we finally know that Carrie and Carrie are on the way to the very same place, the Desert of Desolation. So the one thing we're missing over here is figuring out how Clark's absence is gonna affect David's plan. Will this give the Shadow King an edge? Will the Shadow King end up being a step or multiple steps ahead of David because of this? Now you can let me know in the comments what you think the answers to these questions are. You can also let me know if you did like this episode, what you thought about it, and how you think everything is gonna play out before the end of this season. You can finally let me know if you did like this video by dropping it a much appreciated like and if that were to be the case you can always subscribe and enable notifications for my future videos, community posts and live streams. But until my next video, thank you all for tuning in and have a great day.